สวัสดีครับ Good morning everyone to uh, foreign visitors to Thailand. Uh, this program maybe once a week during the weekend, Friday or Saturday, I will come and speak to you in order to help you uh, understand the uh, politics, uh, political situation in in Thailand a bit, so that you can uh, not only to understand but to appreciate it, uh, both the achievements and some of the shortcomings and so on, and it might also help you in adjusting to the to the environment uh, in Thailand. Uh, Today, I just want to touch upon the uh, political parties to tell you a bit, you know, uh, uh, in short, what are the Thai political parties, how many and so on. Uh, at this point in time and for the upcoming uh, national elections on the 24th of March, so in almost three weeks, two and a half weeks time, I think there are about uh, 50 parties that have uh, entered their names to contest in the party in the national elections. Altogether, we have about 70 registered parties. Okay, but uh, actually, in practice, there are about only 10, a sort of a major parties, the big ones and the medium-sized one. The big ones during the past two, three elections, there were only two major parties, namely the uh, Pur Thai, which its previous name was Thai Rak Thai and Palang Pachachon. But today, its name is Pur Thai, and there is only one major leader, supporter, and a sort of the spiritual guide to this Pur Thai party in the name of Mr. Thaksin Chinawat. He was Thai Prime Minister, I think, in the year 2001 to 2005. And uh, he was charged with many of the abuses of power and corruption practices and so on. And he was sentenced for a two years jail term. But he left Thailand and has been in exile uh, since then. So it's about 10, 12 years uh, already. But Mr. Thaksin Chinawan is still very powerful, very influential in the political life of Thailand, although he lives mostly in Dubai, part of the UAE, UAE United Emirates. He still uh, guide his political parties, movements and supporters and so on. And he is a sort of the, uh, the light of the uh, party, the, the torchlight because uh, of his very personality, decisive, uh, risk-taking, and so on. And uh, at the same time, his populist policy measures have somehow uh, got into the hearts and minds of ordinary Thai people, workers, low-income people, and particularly the Thai farmers in the northern part of Thailand, in, in the northeast especially in the Northeast, where the majority of the Thai population uh, do live, about 30 million uh, of about 68 million. So the Pur Thai is the main party, and they have been in the government three times already, four times, in fact, uh, four times successively. They have won decisive uh, elections at least two times with the absolute majority. But they were being kicked out because there was a widespread protest which led eventually to two military coup d'etats. And we are still at this point in time until the 24th of March under the military government, which has been in power for already five years. Okay, So the Pur Thai is the main player in this upcoming uh, elections. The other political parties, a major one is the Democrat Party of Thailand which is not uh, a family or not a personality uh, control, but it has been uh, quite a, a modern political parties in the sense of adhering to uh, ideologies, namely the liberal uh, democracy, a sort of a progressive force uh, in Thailand. It has been in existence for about 
almost 70 years now and has been, uh, I think, pivotal to the uh, democratic movement in Thailand, trying to bring about representative democracy to Thailand as much as possible. So it is a traditional political party with a sort of a fixed power base because it has been in politics for a long, long time. But it was defeated two or three times already by the Per Thai Party under Mr. Thaksin because so far it has no answer to the populist policy measures of uh, Mr. Thaksin and his Per Thai Party. So it's a whole work for them to come out with an alternative uh, socio-economic development for Thailand. The two parties, the Per Thai and the Democrat, has been on the political arena of uh, Thailand for almost 20 years, okay, up to today. But now we have a third force in the name of the Charat Party, which has been set up by the military junta or backed by the armored forces of Thailand and the Thai uh, civilian bureaucracies and so on. And under the, 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 the leadership is the present incumbent Prime Minister General, General Prayut Chan Ocha, who staged the coup d'etat five years ago, and he wants to continue in politics. And the uh, Pacharat Party has nominated as its candidate for the premiership at this upcoming elections. So in short, for these upcoming elections on the 24th of March, there are three major parties. Let me repeat, Per Thai, Democrat, and Pacharat. Both the Per Thai and the Pacharat, they also have uh, associated political parties or fringe members. Okay, so they are going in not alone, but they have three or four part smaller parties each to help them to form the coalition government after the elections on the 24th. Only the Democrat Party has no affiliates, have no associate uh, political parties, okay? These three parties will be contesting to form the government. At the same time, there are about four or five medium-sized parties that could join any of the coalition to be led either by the Per Thai, by the Democrat Party, or by the Pracharat. Now, what is the trend? What is the guessing game? What is the general feeling? I think the public in general, the media, the academic world, the intellectuals, and so on, even the business sector, all I think more or less expect that General Prayut and his Pracharat Party will form the next coalition government of Thailand. Why is it so? Because General Prayut will not only have the support of the members of his party in the House of Representatives, but by the present constitution, he will also have the support of the Senate or the upper house, which will have uh, about 250 members. And these 250 members of the Senate will be more or less nominated by the military junta or the military government under the leadership of General Prayut. So by the 24th of March, General Prayut already has 250 members in the Senate to back his coalition government. So he needs to combine the 250 seats in the upper house or in the Senate with the number of seats in the lower house or in the House of Representatives to create a majority, more than half of uh, 750 seats combined, the Senate and the lower house or the House of Representatives. So it is expected that uh, he could get the majority of the combined upper house and lower house, or more than half of the 750 seats. So that is the trend at the moment. Now, the question is, who will be joining his coalition government after the 24th of March, especially in the lower house or the House of Representatives? It would be difficult or inconceivable 
that part, the Pacharat Party of General Prayut would uh, be a coalition partner with the Pur Thai because both of them are arch enemies. Because General Prayut and the armored forces twice, I think in the past 10 years, did stage the coup d'etat to kick out the government or the political parties, the, the main coalition partner under the leadership of Mr. Thaksin. So it is very unlikely, it's like the question of oil and water will not be able to mix together. So that possibility of Pur Thai common combining with the Pacharat party is very unlikely or impossible indeed. Then at the same time is that could the Pur Thai and the Democrat party join hands to set up the next government? It is there are two difficulties. They have been also arch enemies in the sense that the Democrat Party has always been against the way Mr. Thaksin Shinawat has been had been running the government. There was so much commotion and protest inside the parliament which spilled over onto the streets and so on. So it's very difficult for the two to combine and set up a coalition government. At the same time, their combined numbers might not be able to get more than half of the combined seats in the upper and the lower house because the 250 members of the senators in the upper house will never back up either of the party or together. They will not never back up Pur Thai and the Democrat. So the combination of Pur Thai and the Democrat would not lead to the uh, their ability to form a coalition government because they do not have the 250 senators under the hand. Then there is a third possibility, the coalition government between the Pracharat under General Prayut and the Democrat Party. There is that possibility. Although they have not been seeing uh, eyes to eyes for the past five years. But there is a possibility that some of their policy measures might find a sort of a compromise. Might find a, in order to overcome the past uh, animosity, difficulties, and form a coalition uh, government. And the Democrat position all along not to support any military generals to become the prime minister that is valid until the 24th of March. But after the 24th of March, after the elections, any generals retired or current and so on will have some sort of the legitimacy in the sense that that particular general for the premiership did come from through the legal means under the constitutional law and come through the election processes. So there is a possibility, much more possibility or, or likelihood that the Pacharat Party under, under General Prayut will be, might be able to combine with the Democrat Party to form the coalition government. But there is also the likelihood of a fourth possibility that the Pacharat Party under General Prayut might be able to gather all the smaller size, medium size parties, six, seven or ten parties, and form a coalition government without allying or joining with either the Pur Thai Party or with the Democrat Party. So this is something that remains to be, to be seen about which party is going to um, marry which uh, other parties to form the coalition uh, government. Okay, for you, my friends here. So just remember maybe uh, three names. You know, the Pur Thai Democrat and the Pacharat, I think they will be the key players in the formation of the next coalition government. 
Okay, so we leave it to that. Then second one, let me touch a bit. What should be the issues or the homework for the incoming new government of Thailand? Then I think we have to look at how the international community look at Thailand, how the consultant firms, the assessment uh, institution look at Thailand. I think what Thailand is being perceived by the international community at the moment okay has to very much to do with i think two words one is the inequality in the thai society i think we are number three after russia federation and the republic of indonesia in terms of wealth gap income gap quality of life gap so we are very much a very unequal society that is the homework for the incoming government on how to overcome the inequality question in Thailand. The second one is that uh, the international community look into Thailand and say that Thailand is in a difficulty in terms of the socio-economic development. The so-called phrase, middle income gap, that is, Thailand lacks high technology, maybe like uh, neighboring countries like Taiwan, South Korea, Japan, or even Australia or New Zealand. At the same time, the basic salary or wages for the labor of Thailand is too high compared to the neighboring countries. India, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Indonesia, the Philippines. So Thailand is trapped in the middle. No high technology, but relatively higher cost for the labor. So Thailand needs to get out of this middle income trap to, make, to have more skilled labor, more engineers, more architects, more designers, more computers, uh, technicians, and so on, more research, and activities, uh, research and development activities. We has to be more scientific, more technological minded. So this is a, a homework for the incoming government on how to improve on the human resources of, of Thailand, how to build up the human capacity so that Thailand can compete at the higher level, not on the basis of the low wages or low labor income. So two words for the major homework tasks or the challenges for the incoming government of Thailand. The question of inequality in the Thai society. Second, the question of the declining competitiveness of Thailand because we are still in the middle income trap. So for this week, let me, I think, conclude by saying that uh, do follow the political developments in Thailand until the 24th of March. And uh, second, to see whether Thailand could develop further and to become a full-fledged, modern, democratic country. And if we could do that, I am sure that all of you living in Thailand will have a happier time and enjoy, I think, the Thai smiled more and more. Thank you very much. Thank you.